In this video, I'm going to be taking some measurements to work out the specific heat capacity of a liquid. The liquid I've got here is just water. So there's an equation that says the change in energy is equal to mc delta theta. And we want to find out the value of the specific heat capacity. We can do that by taking measurements of the mass of water that we're heating up. We're going to look at the change in temperature and we're also going to supply some energy to that. And we're going to supply the energy using this small immersion heater here. Now, in order to work out the energy transferred, it's going to be equal to the power of this multiplied by the time for which it's on for. And in order to work out the power of this electrical heater, we're going to use the equation that says the power is equal to the current times the voltage. So, for this experiment, there are a lot of things to measure. We're going to be measuring the current using an ammeter. We're going to be measuring the potential difference or voltage using a voltmeter. We've got a thermometer in order to measure the temperature. We've got a stopwatch to measure the time. And finally, we have a mass balance in order to record the mass of the water that we're heating up. So with my mass balance, I'm just going to turn it on. And I'm going to make sure that it's uh, set to the appropriate unit. Now this one measures in grams. I'm going to put an empty beaker on top and then I'm going to zero this so we can see that uh, as we add some water to it we're going to be recording the mass of liquid added. Now the exact volume doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go up to about there. Okay so for this I'm going to be using 227 grams, and this is 0 0.227 kilograms. So it's always good to convert to SI units. So 227 grams of water is going to be heated up. Now, when I do the actual experiment, I'm going to be doing it on a heat proof mat. Uh, and that means if this does get hot, it's not going to affect the table. Um, this immersion heater here, what I'm going to do is connect it up into a circuit. Now I have an ammeter in order to measure the current that's going through this component. So that one goes in series. And then across the terminals of this immersion heater, we have a voltmeter. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that in like so. So I'm just going to turn those on like so. Now, in order to reduce any extra heat loss from the top of this, I've just got a small lid that I made out of cardboard. And there's a couple of holes in it. One of them allows the immersion heater to go through. So that's going to go into the liquid as far as possible so we get the most uh, heating effect. And there's another hole for my thermometer. Okay, so this one here, I'm just gonna put it in there like so. And then we're going to let that get to the same temperature as the water. Now what I'm going to be doing is recording the temperature every minute. I'm going to leave it switched on for about 10 minutes. So basically what I'll be doing is as soon as I turn the power pack on, I'll press go. And then we'll record the temperature and the time. And it's always a good idea to keep your eyes at the same level as the measurement that you're taking. So uh, everything looks ready to go. Um, I suppose the other thing I need to say is that what I'm going to be doing is, because there's going to be all sorts of convection currents inside, um, I'm just going to be stirring the water like this before I take a reading. Um, and this means I've mixed all the water so that we have even heating of the water inside. So I think we're pretty much ready to go.
Okay, so I'm going to stop the timer now and turn this off. So we've now got some data. I'm just going to leave this to cool down because it does get quite hot. As well, just make sure that when you're using electricity and water, you are very careful about the way you do the practical. You don't want to be getting this thing here covered in water. It's not good for you. So we've got the mass of water that we recorded at the start. We've got our change in temperature and we also have our time. Now to work out the energy supplied, it's going to be equal to the current times the voltage and these stayed consistent throughout the experiment. And if we know the power and we know the time, we can look at the energy transferred. So now we've got some data, we can actually do some results analysis. And I've got that in the next video where I show you how I've analysed this data to calculate the specific heat capacity of this liquid.